getting back! For this ballistic busting episode, Drew and Josh bang, burn, crack, stab, and drown the most popular ceramic plates on the market. We're gonna leave him out here for about 24 hours. Well, according to my calculations, that uh, should not have been possible. What will happen? Let's oh, find oh, out! Oh my god! Remember, anything you see us do here today, don't try at home. Ever. Why are we doing this video? Well, we've been using body armor for years, and chances are if you've bought body armor in the past five years or so, you've probably taken a look or even purchased the HESCO L210. It's one of the, arguably the most popular plates in the market right now, and a lot of people have them, and we have six of our own individual plates, so three sets of two, that we've all personally purchased with our own money. HESCO did not send any of these to us, and we thought that this is the perfect place to do this test on. Now, when it comes to armor, it seems to be a little bit of, there's some magic to it. Those ceramic plates are actually catching those rounds as opposed to stopping them like a piece of steel. But what happens when it gets damaged or you go outside of the manufacturer's warranty claims like soaking it in water, which we're going to do, dropping it 17 to 20 times, somewhere in that window, uh, hitting it with an edged weapon, knives, axes, things like that. Two lamb. One lamb. <laughs> And then what was the last one that we're doing? Well, baking. Uh, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna mimic a plate going into a vehicle for an extended period of time at a relatively high heat. So we also have a control, and uh, then after we do all of those things, we are going to shoot them like you do with body armor. We're gonna start with 556 five, and 193. We're gonna shoot it three times. If it actually makes it that far, then we'll move on to AK M76 ball and M67, you guys can look it up. We'll put a note here. The point is, that's what these plates should be able to take, either three rounds of 5.56 or three rounds of 7.62 by 39. Now, I have no doubt that the control is gonna be just fine, but what do you guys think it's, is actually gonna happen? Throw it in the comments before we actually get to it. Without further ado, let's yeah. start damaging some armor. Yeah, put it in the comments, your initial thought, and then after you watch the video, you know, follow up, reply to yourself. It's okay to do that. All right, let's do it. Mm, definitely the the one we cook, the cooked one. Twenty four hours in the water is a long time, and it's submerged. I think that's probably going to be the worst. I'm going to have to side on uh, the water one. It's whatever, dude. All right, first the control. We still have one plate in the water and another in the oven, but we want to see what a plate does with zero damage. Yeah, and look at all this awesome setup. We got, uh, we needed some extra light. Slow-mo cams, uh, well, apparently they don't let a whole ton of light in. And thank goodness we have uh, Mr. Beefcake Chad Barber over here. Oh, hey. So uh, thank you very much to him for the slow-mo stuff. Let's shoot it. For the sake of consistency, we're just going 15 feet. Uh, 15 yards, I'm sorry, 15 yards. Do have some back face deformation, but yep. All right, let's do it again. Okay. <sighs> okay, no penetration. Definitely have some more back face deformation now. Interesting. Let me go on like the edge. Let me try to hit it like No penetration. Definitely uh, taking some, uh, let's caliper that. This is not a perfect test. No. This is not a perfect measurement by any means. Yeah, just over half inch. Half inch, all right. Well, the plate has done what it, would say, what it says it would do. That's true. Okay, since it's the control, let's shoot it with the AK. Yep. Oh my gosh, look at this. <laughs> Look at that, dude. It's got stretch marks now. now. To be fair, 
This was rated to take either three rounds of 5.56 or three rounds of 5.39. So we are exceeding what it is supposed to be able to do, just under half inch. It's not as deep, but it's certainly wider. Just under a half inch. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna need the heat gun to fix that. <laughs> Dude, if you hit that in the same spot twice. You're done, you're done. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, hold on, let's measure the back, first de <laughs> back face deformation. Okay, mm -hmm. and remember it offset some too. So I'm gonna factor in some of the offset of the plate from the clay. Three and a half inches. That's how deep it went. So that's like an, av that's an average depth, three and a half inches, right? All right, so on the fifth shot, second AK shot, we did hit it in the exact same spot as the as the uh, 556 round, and it punched clean through. So, though I'll, I'll say it did what it said it was going to do. Yeah, this is a good control. The plate passed our sure. test. It also passed what they have considered the NIJ or the, what they stated it should take yep. three rounds of 556. And it took a little more than that, but. Drew had a perfect shot and landed that in the uh, the same spot. So just don't get hit in the same spot twice. A lot of people say that when you put your armor away wet, it can start to cause some of the material to fall apart on the inside. Maybe you're out hiking when it's super hot and you're sweating, or you're out hiking in the snow, or you're on the flat range and it's starting to rain. Either way, we want to know if your plates are wet for 24 hours at least, can that cause some damage in the stoppage abilities? So what happens when you ride your plates hard and put them away wet? We're about to find out. Josh is gonna put this on and we're gonna put him in this little pond for 20 hours-ish. We've got the fins, we've got the snorkel, and we're gonna see how long he can tread water and just float and he has everything he needs to survive for a full day, so. What? Here you go, put him on. Hop in, right now. Why can't, wait, wait, wait. Right. Why can't we just throw this in the pond and, and let it sit for? It's not cinematic enough. Okay. I'm trying to make it as realistic as possible. Yeah, yeah. Why me? <laughs> Why not? We're gonna leave him out here for about 24 hours just to get the plate nice and soaking wet, and Josh too for that matter. And then we're gonna pull him out, we're gonna fish him out, and see how the plate performs in total wetness. Doing great, Josh. <sighs> Oh yeah. Okay, that was fun, but for real, let's just submerge this. Uh, put a rock on top of it to mark the spot and keep it under and 24 hours. Sounds good. Let's go. It's gonna be 24 hours right on the dot. Yeah, oh, oh no. <laughs> All right, here we go. Dude, that looks Oh. That looks blue. It does, it's lost some color. All right, feels normal. Let's go shoot it. Okay. So for what it's worth, we actually tend to run Hesco 3810s or West Coast Armor. Um, their level fours are heavy. And while I do apparently stop AP rounds, I don't feel like I need level fours. Uh, we're only shooting L210s right now today because we had a plethora of them, being that all three of us had spent our own money on those. But if you guys are curious about other plates that we could test or ways that we could experiment with this kind of armor, throw in the comments, because I'm curious. Yeah, and before you get all freaked out about, oh, this is a terrible financial decision shooting your own place. <laughs> hey, we've got a ton of plates. Like, we all have nicer plates than this, either West Coast Armor or, like Josh said, Hesco 3810s. So these are burners. Literally been sitting in a closet for like a year. Yeah. So talk about burning, my thighs are burning right now. <laughs> <laughs> Walking backwards. <laughs> no, we can't be having that. Huh? That word's just too cringe. Okay. Yeah, just put wet, that'll be way better. <laughs> 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 
Wow. No penetration? Honestly, less deformation than the other ones. Okay, let's do it again. Oh, by the way, Wideners sent us the ammo for this test, so big thanks to those guys. If you're looking for uh, ammo of pretty much any type, hit them up. Wideners, they're legit. All right, let's do this. Gonna be fine. Dude, same Still. story. So far it's holding up. Let's put the third round in it and okay. see if it actually passes the, the standard. Passed. Great. Oh, I'm starting to wonder if that went through. Did I hit the same, I think I hit the same spot. Oh. Oh my gosh, man. Oh. oh. Dude, you didn't okay. even hit it in the exact same spot. No, I did not. The most, I mean, we've seen this before. But so, that's interesting to me. Yeah, we did shot one, shot two, shot three, and it blew the back out. <laughs> Man, there's just no way to describe no, these things. not really. Yeah, that's all right. right. You were right. Nick yep. was correct. This you is were. the one that would fail. You were. If I put an AK round up there, it'll be fine. It'll stop it. Yep. <sighs> Yeah, we got it deformation. It did stop it. But it did stop it. Ooh. Oh. Yep. So we have our second penetration. There's the NIJ rating. <laughs> Let's be clear though, this is still an NIJ BN test, which stands for, though it's okay if you don't know, stands for NIJ, but not. I think this one has failed. I wonder if we heated it up a lot, if it would regain its power. Should we try? Yeah, let's try it. Okay. Don't drop your plates because it will destroy them. That's what we've all heard. Let's see what the effect is uh, when we drop this numerous times on different edges and on its face and then shoot it. We are at 53 inches. The Cordura already started to tear. Dude, that sounded bad. It did. Let's get the top. Let's do another face drop. Good gosh. It's dude. loud. Got a little on the edges here, on that edge. Let's do this top edge. Yep. Let's hit this one right here, if you can. Who's doing all the work here? <laughs> I don't know. Let's drop it like that. Man, lots of bounce. Let's do that one when again. it bounces like that, it makes me think it's probably flexing some. Oh, that was loud. And one more. I think that is more than enough. It's a lot of dropping. I mean, it's to the point where you can recognize all of the corners have some damage to them. Um, 
I think we're already at the point where if someone dropped it that much, they're an idiot. Which, does that make us idiots? <laughs> Anyways, okay, so I'm happy with that. You wanna shoot it? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. They say America's pastime is baseball. I beg to differ. America's pastime is shooting guns. But you need someone who can build guns, especially if the world falls apart like the direction we're heading right now. So if you're curious, head over to SDI, which is the S Samoan. I don't even know what they are anymore. Samoan. The point is, if you guys are looking at uh, getting some equipment built, like this here yonder rifle, rifle, uh, head over to SDI. What the initials stand for, only God knows. Snoring Desert Institute. If there was any hairline fracture after dropping it. No, man, it's kind of performing the same. Dang. Ooh. Ooh. Dude. Oh, that would hurt. That's, yeah. a, that's a big. It's a big boy right there. Splitting. Little stretch marks on the side there. Yeah. That's about right. So we got little over a half inch DF. Let me get my notes out. I clipped the very corner of it. Well, and it did go through. So it looks like it hit and just like kind of moved down and ripped out this corner, which this is one corner we dropped it on a lot. We're definitely testing what we did to it. It's not a, this is not the fair plate test. We're just. Yep, definitely got oh. some uh, deformation, but no penetration. It's still a clean line from here to here. This hasn't pushed too far in. Oh, dude. Oh yeah, man. You had shot one there. This is like within an inch. So within an inch of another shot, you've got penetration. That ceramic was so weak, it just couldn't stop anything. Yep. So when it comes to heat and ceramic plates, there's uh, kind of two camps that people think of. On one side, we've seen a 20 year war with guys rolling around in Humvees with armor and theoretically not having any problems at all. On the other side, it makes sense that if you have glue and whatever epoxy they use to push all of this stuff together and compact it, that with temperature, some of that stuff is gonna start to come apart, right? Right. Well, cars, from a quick Google search, shows that on a typical American sunny day can get up to 170 degrees. Now, our little toaster oven is going to be our vehicle because, well, at the time of this filming, it's pretty cold in Tennessee. So we can't just throw this in a car for a couple of days. We're gonna set our oven at 180, since we can't go down to 170 on this toaster oven. And uh, we'll throw it in there for a couple hours. At some point, if it really starts to look terrible, we may yank it out. Uh, on the other hand, if it doesn't show any wear and tear, that will be a pretty interesting uh, test too. Hypothesis, what do you think? Is it gonna start to come apart? I think this one's definitely gonna start to come apart. Okay, well, I guess we'll see. Yep. Actually, hey, do you have a fire extinguisher? No. <laughs> Send it. <laughs> got a large pep for Chad. Do I have a Chad? Chad. Chad. Chad? 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 We'll toss it out for the homeless lady to grab it. So that's been in there for how long? Uh, about five hours. About five hours. Which so, is probably the heat of the day kind of timeline. 305 minutes at 180. Uh, typically cars get up to about 170 like we mentioned before. So this was a little bit hotter and not in there, you know, all day, but a good portion of the, the heat of the day. So let's go. It's definitely feeling soft on the edges. I'm not gonna lie. Let's go shoot. <laughs> okay. All right. Not a deep dish. These L210s are certainly more of thin crust. Where's your what? Where's my strap? Okay. 
That's, that's, that's the most back face deformation that we've seen with a first round. Okay, we'll give him the run again. Yep. The reveal. Okay. Yeah. Wow. No pin. I want to call that quarter inch. Well, at least. Yeah, quarter to half. No pin. Oh my goodness. But that bro. is, uh, that's actually somewhat consistent with the other ones. When we start to hit it down here on these edges, we notice a lot more bulge. Yeah, it's not supported by the, the mass of the plate. Yeah, that's a one and a quarter. Uh oh, we've seen this before. One inch from the other one. Before we turn this around, you notice this down here? This is the adhesive that was baked off. Okay, yeah, just deformation still. Unreal. But no, no pin. Wait, but it hit up here. It's this one. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, this one. Heels on the ground, comrade found, heels to the sky, Western Spy. The reveal. Yeah, man. Dude. That's, that's gonna be a sternum puncher right there. So we're at uh, a little over one. All right, let's do one more. Well, you would be wrong. Yeah, there Damn, we go. Dude. We do have penetration right there within one inch. That seems to be the common factor, no it matter is. the plate. Genuinely impressed. Me too. What happens when you stab one of these plates? Now on the back of it, uh, there's a warning that says, this garment is rated only for the ballistic threat stated above. It is not intended to protect against sharp edged or pointed instruments. Now when I read that, I think, okay, uh, this is not supposed to stop blades, but does that also mean that uh, that blades will compromise its ballistic integrity? So let's find out. Okay. Let's mm -hmm. take this off just yeah. so that no one says that the tape protected. Yeah. Let's just do the first standard one you want. Sure. Yeah, give it a punch. All right. Ready? Ooh. Okay. There goes my blade. <laughs> All right. Wow, that's pretty tough stuff, man. Yeah, that's totally bent the blade. Woo, good golly. Oh. <clears throat> North American rescue videos. Oh. Two lamb, one lamb. <laughs> Technically, this is still an edged weapon, right? Yeah, the Patriot. <laughs> British soldiers and the Patriot. Oh, dude. Okay. Oh, dang. Rune Nation. Uh, uh. <laughs> okay. Uh. So I'll start by saying, dude, that actually, uh, that does stop a blade. Hold on, I got one more. Uh, shit works! Uh, uh. Okay, yeah, that's uh, pretty good. All right, let's hit the sides. Because, you know. Oh, sure. I'm getting myself out of the way here. That's uh, a lot, that's a, that's a lot of damage. Actually, it's not a lot of damage. Oh, oh, dude. Well, it it will. Oh. We're gonna re-edge all these blades. That's 420 high carbon. If people are curious. <laughs> 420 high carbon, and we're baking a plate in the shop. <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, so anyway, yeah, it looks like it will actually stop 
uh, an edged weapon, but what does it actually do to the internals and is it gonna be compromised? <laughs> Let's find out! All right, before we shoot this thing, if you guys are looking for some edge weapons, knives, tools, some of those sorts of things, go ahead and check out Sportsman's Guide. They make content like this possible. Huge shout out to them, big thank you. Also, if you guys spend over $100, for the first $100 that you spend, you can save 20 bucks if you use the discount code DIRTYSIV, all caps, one word. All right, let's shoot this thing. Arrgh! Right where we chopped it. Well, good, that's where really? I was aiming. Okay, kind of the same as kinda, last time. Kind of the same. All right. A little bit of deformation, not worth measuring. That's what I expected. All right, let's do it again. Okay. Man, that punch deep on that plate. Oh yeah. Yep. Holding up so far. Definitely have some deformation. Nick, I don't know if you can see this on the side how it's bowed out both ways. And then we definitely have, there's the round. Oh yeah, dude, it caught it. That's the round. Oh, look at this. Look at that. We have, Oh. It's... so this is not penetration. This is where it blew the ceramic out the bottom. You can see the round in there. We had uh, about a third, almost a quarter of an inch. Yep. Oh, is it this one? Yeah. Okay. Oh, dude, oh. same thing. Dude. Yeah. Okay, look. It almost. It's starting to split on the back there. Chunks of metal in there, that copper jacket. We have about almost one inch of deformation. About consistent. Yep. What do you think, did it go through? Uh, no, I don't think it did. Ooh. It did not, but. Pretty, uh, I mean, th this is where it took the brunt of the damage from the blade. We hacked it, we smashed it, we stabbed it with a lot of force. Three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch. And granted. Granted, this does this offset a little bit. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow, that thing's holding up. Just stretch marks. That's it. I gotta come up with a new line. So that would have been here. That's pretty consistent with the other ones. So I'm gonna say, I don't even think it's worth measuring, but I'm guessing it's like a quarter inch. Yeah. Nasty. So far, I'm very impressed I am with too. the L210s. All right. Dude. All right, that's six rounds. Yeah. It's three five five six rounds, three AK rounds, all in different places, so we didn't double up on the same hole. Um, but we did prove that the L210 is capable of surpassing even more than what you might have assumed. Yeah. So uh, that's impressive. I wouldn't want to get hit with any of that stuff. It'd be very uncomfortable. Nick, I don't know if you can tell, but oh, yeah. the back of the plate is starting to look flat. So in closing, the results that you've seen kind of speak for themselves. We had a pretty similar experience regardless of what we did to these plates. Some obviously uh, performed slightly better than others, but they're all pretty, pretty great compared to our control set. So Hesco L210, like it's a pretty good option. Yeah, the durability is, uh, it's impressive. And I had my own myths and hypotheses and I was proven wrong. Uh, there's, you can inflict a lot of damage on these and as long as you're not stacking rounds right on top of each other, dang, they still really hold up well. Yeah, and if you have a problem with our testing, well, remember, this isn't a real test. This is NIJBN, but not. And uh, you know, you can always go and test your own plates and make videos about it and we'll watch it and yeah. that'd be great. So I think that's all we need to say. Yeah. Okay, if you all have any ideas, throw it in the comment section and we'll see if we can bust some more myths. Closing thoughts for you guys real quick. I know there's a lot of people that will say, uh, well, the second amendment doesn't cover body armor. That's, that's complete garbage. If you have a right to own a seatbelt and wear it, <laughs> you should have a right to own body armor and wear it. Go exercise in it, wear it to the range, get used to wearing it, get comfortable in it. 
you go to an airsoft event, if you're running around the house doing CQB at home, wear your body armor, get used to it. Full stop.